Okay, Act Three, Act Five, Scene Three. Um, so in the previous scene, we saw the four four of the Thanes, uh, four of the Scottish Thanes have abandoned Macbeth and have joined the English forces, and they're on their way to Burnham Wood. And then the scene shifts. Remember, I mentioned that now, towards uh, as we're approaching the, the final battle scene, we're going to have Team A on the one side of this on the stage, then Team B, then Team A, then Team B. So the, the pace is going to be fast. So we shift now to Macbeth's castle, and we're in, on Macbeth's team. Now look at the contrast. Remember, I mentioned contrast is, a, is an important thing. Remember my Van Gogh speech, um, where scene A versus scene B, the the elements that the, that the author chooses to juxtapose reveal something about the theme, and they do here. Uh, he's in his castle. He's in a room in the castle, so it's a, 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 a confined space, and Macbeth is alone. Paid servant, paid servant. He's basically alone in sharp contrast to these three peers. There were four of them, rather. There were four peers, and they were together as buddies. Now, that's what Macbeth lacks now because he's cut himself off from that, a la Voldemort and the uh, Horcruxes. Uh, the thrust of this scene uh, is that Macbeth is starting, he's unhinged. He learns that he's losing his, his, uh, the loyalty of his thanes, and he never had it to begin with. Uh, he's, he's starting to come un, unhinged. And just like Lady Macbeth, who a couple of scenes ago we saw was tremendously unhinged, she's, he scapegoats uh, his minions. He's got a servant and he's got a, a doctor, and he, and he bullies them, uh, both of them, viciously. Uh, again, it's not going to come across as well in my reading, but if you watch a version of it, you'll see him bullying in exactly the same way that Lady Macbeth bullies again. So if it happens again and again and again, you can't help but think that this is something to do with theme that Shakespeare wants to uh, draw our attention to. Um, okay, so let's start the walk through. Uh, bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. So he's obviously gotten reports that he's losing his thanes, which we've seen up here. And he says, okay, let them all go to hell. I don't care. Here's the great theme. We see what we want to see. Macbeth clinging to the lies that he wants to believe. But of course, his subconscious, as we've discussed, you know, knows what the truth is. Let them all fly. Till Burnham Wood removed to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. Yeah, right. Okay. Keep telling yourself that brain. Your body knows better, and your body is giving you these panic attacks. So what are you going to listen to? What's the boy Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? So there's prophecy A. I can't remember which one it was anyway. But anyway, there's one of the prophecies. Burnham Wood's never going to come to Dunsinane. And Malcolm was born from a woman, so he can't touch me because the witches said, the witches that know all mortal consequences have th pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power over upon thee. Okay, keep telling yourself that tip of the iceberg. The real iceberg is what's going to move you. Um, then fly false thanes and mingle with the English epicures. So he's bull he starts by bullying the, the English. I'm not the loser. The English are. Epicures means he, they're this fine, refined, you know, um, uh, overly civilized, self-indulgent uh, culture compared to a stout-hearted Scottish culture. So he's 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 throwing mud onto an other, onto an outgroup to make himself feel stronger. Scapegoating, and it continues. Uh, the mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag nor doubt nor shake with fear. Nonsense, nonsense. He's already shaking with fear, but keep telling yourself that. Um, so there's a bit also the, the the undercurrent that runs through this is the nihilism that we've talked about already. I've talked about the jo Joker several times, and the Joker theme uh, intensifies as we approach the end. And it, it nihilism, because nihilism is this universal theme. Let the world burn. Macbeth says later on, let myself burn. There's a suicidal fanaticism, suicidal resignation, suicidal nihilism, which is very much in line with, with the theme of the Joker as well. Okay, so here comes the bullying. Uh, a servant enter, and a servant has bad news. He has The servant has the news of the 10,000 troops that we've learned um, uh, are coming up from England. Malcolm is bringing them. So the servant enters, and the servant is terrified. You know, you shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. You've heard that before. So here comes the messenger with bad news, and he's terrified that Macbeth is going to take him to pieces, tear him to pieces. 
And Macbeth says, The devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon. Where gotst thou that goose look? So he's all frightened, like a he's pale white with fear, confronting this crazy king who has absolute power. There is 10,000. Well, what? Are there 10,000 geese? You fool, you idiot, villain. Soldier, sir. And then... Uh, in the in the seventy nine version, Ian McKellen actually cuts the boy. It's it's a young boy actually, and, and Ian McKellen cuts his face, and that really accentuates the bully thing. But he says here, "Go prick thy face, and overread thy fear, thou lily livered boy." So we blanched. He's blanched with fear, and he says, "Go." They used to pinch their faces, you know, to get their to get the blood circulating in their cheeks, so they look healthy. What soldiers patch death of thy soul, those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. So again, I'm not afraid you are. I'm not the coward you are. Sound familiar? That's Lady Macbeth. My husband's the coward, not me. Macbeth is doing the same thing. They're, they're parallel characters. It's such, it's, it's such a well-written play. What soldiers? What soldiers? Where are the soldiers coming from? Way face, you pale face. The English force so please you. Take thy face hence. So he tells him to go away. Now the servant leaves. Now he calls for Satan. Satan is another servant, and he's going to help. Uh, he's one of the attendants, and he's going to help him put on uh, his armor. And there's, there's probably no... Uh, th- th- it's not a coincidence that Satan is pronounced Satan, S-A-T-O-N, Satan, um, for obvious reasons. Shakespeare has aligned himself with the satanic forces. Satan, he calls out. I am sick at heart. Now here it begins. Well, what is? Why is he sick at heart? It's it's out of fear, but it's it's and, and it's but it's deeper than fear. Fear that he's he accuses the other people of being guilty of, but it, he himself has it. So he is sick of fear, but it's deeper, as you'll see. When I behold Satan, I say he screams out. Uh, this push will cheer me ever, or de- or de- deceit me now. So I'm sick at heart when I behold these enemies coming at me because I'm going to get killed. He's afraid of getting killed, but he's also afraid of because he's lost his buddies. Look at these guys. Remember, there's four of them, four of them. Shakespeare put all four of them together in one room to make it to make them look like homies, to make them look like they're they've they've got they've got they've got bros to get to 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 get their backs, if you know what I mean. It's it's we do. We need we need the respect and the love and the companionship of our fellows. Uh, without that, we get no positive emotion. We don't get the dopamine or the endorphins or whatever released, and so we're, our lives are filled with negative emotion of being alone. We're not creatures to be alone, but Shakespeare maybe is alone now. So that's another reason he's sick at heart. So there's all these forces, of course, that are that are uh, are storming uh, within him. So this push, so this this uh, he, the troops are coming up. And Macbeth says, and, he, and the Bex, Macbeth, Macbeth here signals the audience and says, "Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the big battle. This is the big boss battle. You know, this is so now. Now it's now or never. It will cheer me, which means I'll win, or I'm dead. I have lit now. Here, here we go. Here's the alienation, the depression, the lack of of uh, of, of will to live. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the sear, the old age, and the uh, and the, the yellow leaf." So he's like a leaf that is at the end. Now, he's still a youngish man. I'm, I'm assuming he's like, what, early 40 or something like that. So he's still got some time or maybe 30 or something like that, depending. Um, but what's there left to live for? He's cut himself off from everything that is valuable. He's, sitting, he's like Smog the dragon from The Hobbit. He's sitting on a mountain of gold that is of absolutely no use to him. It's an age-old theme. It's an age-old theme. He doesn't have what's truly valuable in life. And that which should accompany old age as honor, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have. But in their stead, I get curses, not loud. Nobody's cursing me aloud because they're afraid, but they're deep. I only get mouth honor. All this people lying to me. I get breath, which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not. So people would love to deny the words that they say but they dare not because they fear me so he's got all the fear he's got none of the love theme depression without these sources of positive emotion we are vulnerable that's where depression comes from so the lesson here for life is to fill your life with the things that will provide positive emotion love family good job steady job security all those things um a, a sad again 
it's the pity. Um, I have the, the big question, why is Shakespeare building this pity into this play? Why doesn't he have him just a straight-up Voldemort villain? Well, why is Voldemort so one-dimensional? It's a kid story. Kids understand the world as, as uh, in one-dimensional terms, which is not totally fair to J.K. Rowling, I suppose, because she has a lot of complex characters in there as well. Harry's full of flaws. Hermione's full of flaws. She's too goody-goody and annoying, so there's things to dislike about her. She has to learn a lesson in the first book. Um, Ron, of course. Is, so, yeah, so there's complex characters in those stories, too. But her villain is straight up villain, sociopath, so psychopath. So fair enough. But here's Macbeth. He's not. Uh, so, so the question is, yeah. So why? Well, I've already answered that question in previous videos. Uh, the pity is there because Shakespeare says that life is complicated. Um, is he redeemed? That's a. That's. I'm not going to answer that question because it's up for. You. That's up to you. Theme: A person's first appearance versus reality. Macbeth's entire world is consumed of nothing but lies and the wasteland. Okay, so there's life in the wasteland. Go ahead, enjoy it. Uh, Satan arrives and he says, what is your gracious's pleasure? What do you want? He says, what's go he, Macbeth wants to know the news, although he just said up here that no more news, no more reports. He says, what's going on? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. Yes, there are 10,000 troops coming. I'll fight till my bones, till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me mine armor. So here's the nihilism. Let myself burn. Let the world burn. Suicidal abandon. There's the Joker theme without any of that reason to live why not just burn it all to the ground if you're a tyrant you don't need your armor yet but i will put it on symbolic he's feeling vulnerable so he puts it on even if he doesn't need it make himself puff himself up and make himself feel nice and strong send out more horses scur the countryside round the country round hang those that talk of fear so here's he's trying he's he's trying to rally the troops go there go there do this and kill anybody who talks who's who's afraid give me my not armor how does your patient doctor? So the doctor is standing by, and the patient, of course, was Lady Macbeth. And so he asks now about uh, Lady Macbeth. Actually, let me read this first before, in case I forget anything. So return to physical bravery minus the love and honor he enjoyed for his service and sacrifice. Yeah, so sure, here enough, he, he's, he is. He, he's the warrior now, and he's calling out his troops, and he's doing what he did as a hero at the beginning of the play. Um, but, of course, he, he, there's no reason to do it. It's an empty gesture. It's getting him no... Uh, it's giving him no pleasure whatsoever, no benefit whatsoever. So how is my wife? How is Lady Macbeth? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick coming fancies. Fancies means crazy imaginings that keep her from her rest. She can't sleep. There's the, the death of sleep. And now Macbeth turns to the uh, doctor and says, uh, he's really speaking for himself here. He says, can you cure her of that mental illness? And he's speaking to... Uh, he's speaking of himself as well. And again, if you watch Ian McKellen say this, Ian McKellen's actions are just, it's heartbreaking. Cure her of that? Cure her of her mental illness? Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Now here's why we love Shakespeare. Because these words can be understood by everybody. Extreme, non-extreme. We've all had pets who've died. We all will have family members that die. We all will suffer, you know, the, the sorrows of life. And, and we have to deal with the sadness and the anxiety that comes with these life events. They're inevitable all of us. And so the audience is sitting there looking at this, re hearing this, and it, and, it, and it hooks, it hooks deep into our own experiences. I don't, do I have to go through this? It's, it's, it's so clean and clear. This is what I love about Shakespeare. And Macbeth's words actually through to the end are just absolutely brilliant. Unlike uh, Romeo and Juliet, as I've mentioned, which is, can be very convoluted and difficult to understand. Can you not minister to a mind disease? Can you, can you treat a diseased mind? Can you pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow? Lovely phrase. Can you take the sore out? We're trying to do this with drugs now, by the way. Um, I read in the newspaper a couple of months ago that they're working on things that will, you take a pill and it will, it will find the part in your brain that contains that trauma and just kind of erase it. And there was a movie about that recently too. Uh, and that, it leads to the question of, I mean, 
we, to a large extent, our, we, are, we are our memories. And if we lose our memories, then we lose part of ourselves. So there are lots of ethical questions involved in that. But here's that wish. Wouldn't it be? Well, that's why we, that's why we take drugs. That's why we drink alcohol. That's why we take drugs. That's why, we, that's why we, we blow out all memory by intensely playing video games for eight hours a day so you don't have to think about anything. Um, it's, it's why we, uh, it, we, we, we try to run from ourselves. We try to run from our own minds. And he's saying, wouldn't it be nice if you could just open up your brain, pick out that memory, throw it away, and you're, you're, you're just like a newborn babe again, innocent. Raise out the written troubles of the brain. Just erase it. Burn it out. And with some sweet oblivious antidote, well, there's your crack cocaine or heroin or video games, gambling, sports addiction or whatever it is just so you don't it's an antidote so you don't have to so you, that you can achieve oblivion this is what he wants achieve oblivion well the ultimate oblivion of course is death and that's what he's leading towards of course because he's he's on his way there and he knows it uh or his his un, under under iceberg knows it cleanse the stuffed bosom of the heart cleanse the heart of that dangerous stuff which weighs upon the heart sad 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 beautiful beautiful poetry uh therein the patient must minister to himself wise words from a doctor um we go to psychiatrists these days uh we go to psychologists and ultimately this is what they tell us the psychologist says i'm here to listen you tell me what's going on and you tell me what you need to do to fix it i'll throw in a little lump of advice here and there but therein the patient must minister to himself you must treat yourself face your fears l learn what you have to do and do it and if you don't do it nobody else is going to but a, wa a wise person will take that advice and say okay what are the solutions what's my problem Let's identify it. Help me, doctor. Fine. Help me identify it. But once I identify it, I'm going to take care of myself. That's how you fix your problems. Not so the moron. Not so the person who is obsessed with maintaining the lies that he's built up through his life of squashing down below the surface of the water that dark iceberg that he doesn't want to face and try to live up here in this rationalizing head that that, that thinks it has the answers but doesn't. Throw physic to the dog. Throw medicine. Throw your science to the dog. Throw science to the dogs. I'll none of it. Come, put on my armor. Give me my staff. So what's the, what's, what, how am I going to face it? Oblivion, the oblivion of action. Stay in the world of action. Play video games. Play video games. Absorb yourself so you don't have to think about anything. Satan, send out. Doctors, the thanes fly from me. Come on, come, sir, dispatch. If thou couldst, Dr. Cat... Oh, shoot, that should be Macbeth. I'm sorry, there's a mistake here. Satan, send out. So he's calling to Satan here. That shouldn't be black. He talks to the doctor again. Doctor, the thanes fly from me. So look at him. He's, he's actually... He's, now he's, he's kind of cracking and he's holding onto the doctor for some support. Doctor, the thanes are running from me. Come, sir, dispatch. He's talking to Satan again, I think. If thou, could, if thou couldst, doctor, cast the water of my land, find her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee to the very echo that should applaud again. So he, he turns to the doctor, and I think he's bullying the doctor here. He's saying, doctor, you don't know anything. Your physics are useless. Your science is useless. I'm the real cure. I've got a diseased Scotland on hand, and I'm the one who can cure it. So there's, there's, there's a bullying aspect here. He's puffing himself up and saying, I'm the one that will purge the land. You can't do it with your stupid science. Uh, desperation. What rhubarb chyme or what purgative drug would scour these English hence? Hurts thou of them? Do you have any drugs? These are all these weird drugs that they would have taken back in those days. He says, do you have any drugs that can cure Scotland of the land? I'm the real doctor here. I'm the one with power. The, the, the foolishness of the bully. The, power, the obvious powerlessness of the bully trying to feel powerful. I, my good Lord, your royal preparation makes us hear something. So he says, oh, yeah, yeah, you're dove. okay, yeah, your royal preparation is pretty damn good. Bring it after me. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. So there's he's grappling on to the, the witch's prophecies like, like the deluded fool. We all are. We all are pushing things down. And here's an example of Macbeth doing the same thing. So then Macbeth 
burn he probably exits off stage or then and, and then the doctor looks at us in the audience and he says holy crap were i from if i were from dunsinane away and clear profit again would hardly draw me near there's nothing there's no profit that i could gain that would keep me here so he's only here because he's he has to be here okay and that's the end of well uh dramatic irony the english are not the disease macbeth is lack of self-awareness yeah fair enough he calls english the english are the disease no the english are the cure so there's some irony we know this this dramatic irony we know this but shakespeare or macbeth is totally unaware okay so that's the end of act five scene three a couple of short again they're all short scenes coming up next we'll i'll look at those in a moment